Laura, thank you so much for coming here and sharing your ideas about how um, people from the minority group can be more included in leadership. In your talk, you gave a really great framework. You talked about um, inclusion, influence, and impact. Um, and during this time here, I wanted to do a little deep dive into each of these sections on what kind of action steps can somebody take within those three to develop in those areas. So um, first let's start from the top it with inclusion. Yep, um, first, inclusion, got to have credentials, got to work on cultivating the technical skills and making sure they're very clear and you can demonstrate them and you can carry that with you. And when you go into possible work situations or community power situations, you lead with your credentials, not with your friendliness, not with your sports, um, not with your um, outside hobbies. You lead with your credentials first mm. because that's what gets you in the door. They want to know who can perform here and you focus on performance and forget about whether you're loved or not. You work on that later. And for influence, it's all about relationships. It's about having networks that are beyond, beyond the particular work setting or performance setting and that you can bring something from those networks back to your colleagues or peers. So by the influence stage, it's not just about you individually and personally, it's about what you can give to others. And I have advised people who look for outside awards, don't do it. Your peers aren't going to love you for it unless they're part of the award, unless you're bringing something back to them. Right. So it's all relationships. And so you focus on what do I have that I can give to other people. And if you do have out-of-work situations that pull you away from being task-oriented, find a task-oriented network that you can join or that you can start. So you start it yourself. And um, you get together all the people who come from a particular section of the city and are interested in tech. Even if that isn't what everyone else back in the community does, you stay task focused and again have something to take to your work peers. And for the third stage impact, it's a question of caring about the fate of other people. It's a question of having a passion for what will make a difference in the world and finding a way to act on that passion. You might start a program, you might start a social movement, but as you're higher and higher in a position in your career, you begin to think about what other value can I bring here by thinking about change. So you start thinking about change, not just about doing it well. And if the change happens to be I would like a social movement to get more women in higher offices or more people like me who are Hispanic minorities from City X. That can be the cause, but it also should be something that is in itself inclusive in the other way. That is, it's a big tent that will help boost everybody in the organization. The impact stage is not the time to be adversarial. It's the time to be visionary. Okay, how are All we right. doing? Can I ask another question? All right, quickly, yeah, yeah, thank you. So I was wondering if there's an order to these stages, like could you come out with a vision, start a company, and that would be your credential, or do you suggest deepening your technical skills first and there's an order to this? I almost said something about that, but I think you've gotta have the technical skills. You know, that's bedrock. We need the schooling, we need the credentials, and you have to keep learning. I mean, one story I had no time to tell is about um, a black woman. She's now not so young, but she's a rising leader in her city. And she is constantly trying to learn. Everybody she meets, she finds something they can teach her. Mm. So she's, she's increasing her knowledge base. That's part of what I mean by technical skills, what she knows and what she knows how to do. And you're constantly doing that. That gets you in the door. If you have a vision without the credibility to back it up, it's why I told that kind of silly story about wanting to be an entrepreneur at eight, you know, and I felt I knew a lot about being a child, but um, I certainly had, you know, no way an eight-year-old would know enough to really practice a profession. That was the joke. Um, and that's the whole point. You need the knowledge, you need the skills, and one of the best things we can do in society is to make sure everybody has a chance to get technical skills. In fact, I would even have people do 
technical and vocational, it's now called career and technical education, in preference to college and then get their four-year four degree later mm -hmm. because I think you've got to have something that you bring to performance. So I think that's bedrock and then I think influence before impact because influence is networks and relationships. It's a base of people you can also draw on for your vision. You can have a vision stand up there. I mean, I stand up there sort of bare there without notes or slides talking. You can do that, but if you don't have a credibility, so the technical part, and if you don't have credibility because you know a lot of people who will support you, mm. you have to inspire other people to go with you. Right. Um, otherwise, you're out there by yourself stating a vision that no one will pay any attention to even if you're right. Yeah, I can totally see Thank that. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.